beautiful and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about five like up and coming indie brands like five brands that are on the rise that are starting to gain a lot of traction throughout this i mean past year and i just want to chat about them and like chat about what i think made them popular now because some of these have been around for a bit so we're just going to chat about five up and coming brands and you're going to have to see if maybe these are new brands to you or maybe these are like tried and true because listen I don't know if any of these brands are like brand new, they're just like new to me. So let's dive into that. And if you haven't been here before, hello, my name is Angie. I am a lover of fashion and makeup, especially colorful makeup and especially indie makeup. Listen, my channel runs on indie makeup. I love, love finding and experiencing new brands and I have been supporting and buying and showcasing indie makeup since the absolute dawn on my channel and I I'm not planning to quit doing that soon. So if you want to see some more colorful makeup, if you want to see some more indie makeup, if you want to discover new brands, definitely subscribe because I upload five videos a week. So like I said, I don't think that any of these brands are brand brand new, but for one reason or another, these brands gained a lot of traction throughout this, I want to say wrong past, like the past year, and they've become a bit, a bit like poppin'. I mean, when we think of indie makeup, there are so many different types of indie makeup. There are indie makeup that are becoming really big, like Melt, uh, Colourpop, uh, Juvia's Place, like these are beach cosmetics, like I or is Beach Cosmetic have an investor now? I'm not sure. But indie basically means that they're independently owned. And some brands might start out as indie makeup and then they might be bought out, like Too Faced, or they might start out as indie brands and they might grow and become really big brands that, and be considered so mainstream that even though they're technically still indie, people don't really see them as indie anymore, like Melt, for example, or Dose of Colors or Juvia's Place. They're still independently owned, but they're just so big that people don't really see them as indie. Or well, there's another category where they are an indie brand, but they become so big and popular that they start other brands underneath them and then they in themselves become the parent company like Colourpop or Morphe for example. So indie brands can mean a whole different kind of like slew of things but when we usually talk about indie brands we mean smaller brands. Something that's not maybe mainstream but you can find indie brands at Ulta and Sephora and Cult Beauty and Beauty Bay as well but none of the brands that I'm going to talk about today is that true? Yes, none of the brands I'm going to talk about today are readily available at a bigger retailer. So that's going to be exciting. And three of the brands I have stuff in front of me here, sitting here in front of me, and it's things that I've used and reviewed on my channel. And two of them are brands that I am having my eye on that have become incredibly popular. And we're just going to chat about it. I did film this look, by the way. It should already be live on my channel and I will link a link to the look down below and I will also link all the things that I have on my face in case you are interested. I will also link to all of these brands that I'm going to talk about today and if I have any corresponding videos or playlists I will also leave that down below. So check out the description box because the description box will have all the info including all the things I'm talking about, what is on my face, and it's going to be links to my socials, my vlog channel and my merch if you want to check out my merch. So don't forget to check the description box but let's jump into brand number one which is a brand that I haven't tried but both Boy, oh boy, has Adept Cosmetics become incredibly popular throughout this last year. I I got some PR from Adept, uh, Adept some years back when they were basically doing magnetic palettes. Because I remember when I started hearing about Adept Cosmetics, they were having these big uh, magnetic palettes that was like they held so many shadows. I still have them and I have actually my Cleonad, the um, Cleonad single shadows that are not part of the stained glass. I actually have them in a depth palette. And when I got these palettes in PR, I remember that there were some buzz about like a depth used to have makeup, but no, they, now they no longer have makeup. And there was a little buzz about them thinking about doing makeup again. And then they were coming out with some single shadows. And overall, I feel like they were pretty well received within the community. People were like, yeah, these are nice shadows, these are nice quality. I heard a little buzz, but there was nothing like really, they weren't really hyped or they weren't going viral in any way. And then they released the Plain Jane palette and people were losing their minds. 
some people were saying this was the best palette of 2020 and then they released the last palette they had was the Codain palette and then they had the oh I don't remember the name of it I'm sorry I don't remember the name of it but they have three <laughs> they have three palettes now and I personally have not tried any of them and there is a very easy reason as to why I have it well actually there's a part two part solution but the main reason is that they are extremely shimmer heavy or they are all shimmer palettes and that's not really the kind of makeup I go for I can be all about an all matte look and when I was younger I'm 37 right now I actually used to rock an all shimmer look all the time but with age and the folds that are going around here I will say that I do prefer an all matte look and mattes don't crease as much as shimmers do so sometimes if it's really humid or really warm or if I'm having the makeup on for a really long time shimmers tend to move around a bit um, and mattes do not. I just prefer working with a lot of mattes and I don't really have runny eyes uh, in this upper area sometimes down here in uh, like allergy season but for me, I prefer something that's matte heavy, which is of course something that was shown when I was doing my palette together with Kaleidos, which right now, I mean, I would have said that they were up and coming two years ago, but they are very well established at this point, but I just prefer something that's all matte. And the second part that if it wasn't for the second one, I would have ordered anyways, just because it's so hyped, but they have a very expensive international shipping. And I understand these are crazy times. Um, before this panini happened, I did use to side eye some brands that had very high international uh, like shipping because I knew that you could make it more affordable like I I knew that you can make it more affordable but right now international shipping is crazy and USPS have the worst customer service for international shipping it is I've heard from so many brand owners like that they're it's 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 horrible so right now and it's a bit crazy with international shipping so I un I totally understand but I want to at some point really try the brand just hasn't happened but I am sure that once the right release comes along I will definitely like fall head over heels and I will purchase it for sure it is one of those brands that it's become so hyped throughout this last year that I just can't ignore even last six months since plain Jane because it was like oh yeah people were liking adept that that was nice but then it just exploded after people fell in love with the plain Jane and I just know I won't get like immense use of an all shimmer palette but trust me I'm keeping my eye on them and if you are a lover of all shimmer uh, palettes maybe this could be for you because apparently they have an incredible like sparkly intense shimmer formula I just <laughs> I just haven't gotten around to it the other brand that I haven't tried yet and this is a brand that is probably the, the newest brand to this list but I just couldn't do this video without mentioning Lois Cosmetics Lois Cosmetics I've heard about them before they did have a palette that I, I don't know if I talked about it in my new makeup releases or if I opted out because it had some press glitters I'm not a hundred percent sure sometimes I opt out of talking about new releases if I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, about the brand or where it comes from or I'm not sure if anyone has tried it or if it's like sometimes it's so hard for me to know is this like a good brand this is this a brand that I want to talk about to to you to the viewers so I think I might not have talked about it I'm not 100% sure but it was a brand that I knew about but then they released meet me in the underworld and it was it seemed like the world was just opening up for them this was exactly the palette that people have been waiting for it was a mix of grungy greens and burgundies and going from light to deep you were able to go bold or like more neutral it had amazing like theme and color story and packaging and a great price point and according to the brand owner she sold more palettes in the first couple of minutes than she has sold of all of our other palettes throughout the entire existence of the brand and this is what it means to make it big overnight and I probably like if I can guess it's probably a little bit scary because people are going to be expecting a lot from the next brand like launch from this brand but it really made me go oh oh this is a brand that people are super interested in and I heard people trying this brand like I have a bunch of my friends that bought this palette reviewed this palette and they were like this palette is great so it makes me realize that this is a brand with a great formula 
with great ideas, great execution, and all of a sudden everybody knows about Lois Cosmetics. And this is what it can, like a great release, a well thought out release with a good color story, good packaging and a good theme can do this. As long as you have good quality, of course. But I, I'm just saying that one release, one good release can change everything. And I am super intrigued to see what's coming in the future for this brand. I am definitely keeping an eye on them. And it's definitely an up and coming brand. And it's definitely the newest one on this list. But I was just super intrigued at how fast this brand could go from practically unknown to on everyone's lips. Oh, and Lois Cosmetics is a UK based indie brand, by the way, if you're wondering. And Adept Cosmetics is based in the US. The next one I'm gonna talk about is actually Glam Shop. Glam Shop is a Polish based indie brand. And it is, of course, then in the EU. So if you're living in the EU, you can order from this brand and you can skip on like um, taxes and all of these things because it's within EU. I got a very generous PR package from them. I actually made an order myself and I bought a couple of their their holographic shadows, a couple of their single shadows, just a few. I have a few of their, um, of their single shadows here. These are nice, like nice, especially these. Like I think this one is the, the laser one, the purple to green. It is just oh, so cool. So they have single shadows and they have palettes. This is the Clementine palette. Uh, obviously, the every text is in uh, Polish, but they have the website translated to English. This is the Burgundy palette And I don't know if they're gonna keep doing the packaging in Polish now that they have gotten some like more international uh, Hype this is like the pinky one and then we have the lemon palette here the uh, look at This look at this bright yellow this yellow metallic is insane I do have a video where I'm swatching all of these things from Glam Shop. I have even more things I will leave that down below what happened with this brand is that they had been very popular in Poland, very popular. Of course, it is a Polish indie brand made by a Polish YouTuber, by the way. Everything was in Polish. Everything is very affordable in the grand scheme of things. And it's easy to get a hold of because it's like in Poland. And all of a sudden, a bunch of non-Polish YouTubers, me included, that were doing videos on them in English. And now I see so many people talking about them, so many of my friends, so many people on Instagram, so many people that are running like those kind of news uh, Instagram pages, they are mentioning a glam shop now, and I feel like this was a good brand with a lot of affordable options, colorful, duochromes, multichromes, textured shadows, they just needed to reach out to an international audience. And now that they have, I literally feel like the sky is the limit. I'm so happy she was able to translate her website to English because it makes it a lot easier. I'm just so thrilled to have another exciting European indie brand to keep an eye open for because it's always nice to have European-based brands as well because sometimes in the beauty community, things become very US centric like it everything revolves around what the makeup market in the US is about and that's not necessarily true when it we are in Europe like yeah of course it's it it's important what the US brands are coming up with, but we also need to think a little bit about what's happening here in Europe. And I think it's so fun that Glam Shop is getting more hype and I'm so excited myself that I found them. I just think it's a very fun brand and I am definitely keeping my eye open for them. If you want one recommendation, the single shadow in laser, I've worn it twice and I actually don't wear single shadows that much lately, but that shadow is incredible. It is a bright grass green to a lavender purple duochrome. It is incredible. Incredible. The next brand I wanted to talk about, and this is a brand that's been around for a couple of years, and I've known about this brand because the brand is Udazai. This is a Swedish indie brand. And I feel like this brand has been around for a little bit, but it recently throughout the last year gotten have gotten some hype. And it's because they did a couple of releases that were fairly, fairly well received. When they did the Elva 2, I don't even have it here. It was the colorful one. I'll put a picture here because I misplaced it somewhere. It was the one that was a colorful palette. I feel like that is when people are like, oh, so this is what the brand can do. And since then, they released the Norns collection. And I feel like this 
is when they really broke through. Because this is a release and a palette that I've seen so many people talk about that probably never thought that Uden's Eye was gonna be for them. This palette is incredible, by the way. Such a beautiful palette. And that's also when they released this one that I actually like even more. This is the Urd palette. Look at this grungy, cool tone green moment. So pretty. And this entire brand is based on Norse mythology, so Urd is one of the Norn sisters, and it's just such a cool release. And when they did the Elva uh, 2, they also had these mini palettes, I have these here. They do these mini palettes, and then of course now, they just recently released, I don't know when this video is going live, they just recently released the Freya collection, and this is the Cat's Breath palette. And then they also have the Amber Tears. And just the packaging of Uda's Eye is just so incredibly cool as well. It's just very, very interesting. And this collection also had this double-sided palette. It's the, the burgundy purple side, and then it's this one that's like more of a, a green neutral that has two duochromes in there. It's just a very fun brand, and they have lip products, and blushes, and highlighters, and accessories, and I just have... A lot of excitement when I see, because I am on their PR list, I have a code. Uh, do I? Yeah, I have a code with Uden's Eye, and I have a code with the last brand that I'm going to talk about as well. And I will leave all of the info, of course, down below. But when I get a mail from Uden's Eye and they're like, we're releasing something new, I get in immensely excited. And I feel like Uden's Eye is a brand that. It was small and obscure, but with a couple of really smart, fun, unique, and exciting releases, much like Lois Cosmetics, they have really become an indie brand that people are counting on. An indie brand that people are mentioning when they are talking about great indie brands. They have just grown from the first palettes that they did, because I think they had like three palettes before they came up with the Elva 2. They had such a growth from Elva 2 to, to Norns to this last Freya collection. They've just had such a growth and I feel like this is a brand that's together with a lot of other brands that the reason why they become successful is that they're always trying to be better, smarter, more innovative. They're always trying to bring their A game and that's how I feel about Odensai. They're always bringing something fun and exciting and I'm just very excited to, to, to see everything that they have coming in the future. The last brand that I want to that I want to mention is Alien Cosmetics. Alien Cosmetics is probably the oldest brand on this list. They have been around for a while. And I've heard people talking about them and I heard people using them. I even follow people on like YouTube and Instagram that showed them in flat lace and did swatches and tried them and I was like it's a nice brand. I'll try them at one point. I might, I might even have mentioned at some point that it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I want to try Alien Cosmetics. The main reason why I never tried Alien Cosmetics is that they used to have press glitters in their palettes. And then they did a rehaul of their entire brand and they removed press glitters from their palettes and they no longer, according to my knowledge, have press glitters in the palette. This is the Serendipity palette. <sighs> this is when my love this is the first palette I tried from Alien Cosmetics. This is when my love started. This is a beautiful palette. Their shimmer formula is incredible. Their matte formula is really good too. They have a good matte formula and an incredibly, incredibly good shimmer, metallic, duochrome, multichrome formula. Mm. This one has three duochromes and then it has uh, two shimmers and four mattes. Absolutely stunning. This is my latest love, this is the Lore palette. Oh, this is so good, this is so good. This is five duochromes and four mattes. And I got a couple of these palettes at PR, and I actually bought the Strawberry Shake palette myself. I bought it on pre-order, it's supposed to ship to me in July. This is the Capricorn palette. This is the collaboration that they did with Capricorn. It's just grungy, somewhat diluted like rainbow palette so cool and then this is the low light palette that i have this is a, a highlighter palette with like duochrome highlighters and these are especially formulated to work on a dark, darker skin tone the owner of alien cosmetics is actually a youtuber and she's making such cool looks and she just seems to be such a lover of makeup this is the woman-owned business and i cannot believe that i slept on alien cosmetics for this long i tried them and i was like 
I was blown away by how good I thought that these palettes were and now I'm just so intrigued to try even more things from the brand. She has so many fun things up her sleeve and yeah I'm super super intrigued and I really love that she's working with artists to create uh, her covers as well so that she can have fun covers because I feel like that's part of the whole idea like of a successful brand is to have the whole branding like a good theme, a good cover, a good formula and a good color story like you need all of it. Uh, and yeah, I I don't know what I expected when it came to Alien Cosmetics, but I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't. And it's just, I'm so excited for the brand. And it's been a lot around for such a long time. And I feel like maybe she started sending out more PR because, and I think that that is good because obviously she had a really good product and the only problem was that not enough people were talking about it. And that is, that is like the... That is the whole reason of PR. You have a good product that you know if people just get their hands on it, they are going to talk about it. And that is exactly what happened with Alien Cosmetics. She realized if she sent out some more PR, people were going to recognize the amazing product that she had and they were going to talk about it. And she was not wrong because I have seen her send out PR to some other people as well. They're my friends and they have had the same experience as me. And they've been like, whoa this was amazing so yeah I'm so happy that she is getting the recognition that she deserves and I feel bad that I didn't give her a chance earlier because she has a really good thing going on let me know what are some up-and-coming indie brands according to you like what are some brands that either had a very successful unexpected hit lately that really put them on everyone's radar or someone that just recently started out and just started out with a bang had you asked me a year ago an up-and-coming indie brand i would have said proper beauty for example they came out of nowhere they released a banger product with a banger id and it's just an instant hit and i cannot wait to see what they have in store for the future as well but yeah let me know what are your thoughts am i missing out is there an indie brand that you're like angie this is such a great indie brand you're definitely sleeping on this one let me know i am open open for suggestions thank you so much for being here do not forget to subscribe check the description box for more info and i will see you tomorrow for a new video bye